Hey, welcome to our Door County Library program from Egg Harbor. We are uh, learning about our makerspace sewing machines today. And I'm here with Jess and we're two non-sewers who would love to know how to sew. So we have asked someone to come in to help us and her name is Deb Finn and she's gonna be joining us today. And um, she came in and, and tried to explain to me how to use the sewing machine. And I think after much of me reading and listening to her video, I finally figured it out. Thanks, Deb. And um, Deb is joining us from uh, Southern Door and she was here last week getting us all ready for this. Um, are you unmuted, Deb? Can we hear you? Oh, no? I think you're muted. So just so go you on here. Go on your computer and you have to unmute. <laughs> oh, you're on your phone. Um, oh. Well, oh, let's see. Let's, let's see if we can unmute you. Okay, I've asked you to unmute your your mute. There, there we go. go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So we're talking sewing today, and um, Jess and I are non sewers. Yes, Debbie. Thank you so much for helping us. <laughs> yeah. Great. I'm so sure. This is, this is the thing. I went to an all girls high school in the seventies. Yeah. And we had a homemakers class where we learned to sew and cook and we used the washing machines. So <laughs> just say, I have forgotten those days <laughs> a long time. And um, my sister who also was at that high school, she continued to sew and she's really good. But me, eh, I'm not, I, it, I lost interest and never continued. So, I think I sewed a pair of boxer shorts, which ooh, is funny. Yeah, I sewed seems, a pair of boxer shorts, that so that's about it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. Those yeah. are actually not that easy, so that's pretty oh, good. Oh, I'm like, whoa. <laughs> yeah. Deb, you're a costume designer, right? Well, okay, let's not, you know, I mean... I used to direct theater when I taught high school. And um, so because we had no money, <laughs> I had to, uh, you know, figure out a way to get the kids costumed. And since I knew how to sew, it wasn't too bad. But um, am I a costume designer? Only by default, <laughs> you know, yeah. only because I had to. So, yes, I, I have done it and I, I do continue to do it, um, you know, voluntarily um, at times. So, yeah. <laughs> Now, tell us how you started sewing. I mean, I I told you okay. mine in high school, my, mm -hmm. mother, my mother would never touch a sewing machine. I mean, she was, she didn't even want to clean her house. She had to get a cleaning woman, but. Oh, um, so we, yeah, no, my... we never learned anything at home. <laughs> oh, well, we, we went to public schools. <laughs> <laughs> where my parents were both teachers <laughs> and um let's see I was seven years old and my, my mom always sewed she sewed all the time made real cute little dresses for I have two sisters and a brother and she would make us you know sometimes matching clothing <laughs> when we were little and um it just kind of interested me so when I was like seven I asked her if I could sew something and so we went to the store and picked out some fabric and a pattern that she thought would be simple enough for me and she showed me how to do it and I did it. And once I realized that I could do whatever I wanted on that machine, pretty much, you know, I could make my own stuff that wasn't like everyone else's. Um, I just went to town. I, I made clothes for my Barbies. <laughs> oh, and, you know, <laughs> yeah. I did Kleenex clothes for my Barbies. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's cool. I've seen balloons now. They do balloons. Have you seen that? Yeah. With tape. <laughs> <laughs> so you started when you were seven and you mm -hmm. continued, you made your own clothes and um now we're starting and we have these machines should we if we're going to have this be something we're going to continue should we prepare like have some supplies that we always have 
like should we get a sewing box mm, mm. Good idea. um oh, well yeah. it, it you know it really depends i don't know what kind of clientele you're going to have um but i always have this I don't, i'm going to turn this now i don't know if you, you see my little basket here my little uh -huh. wicked old basket and this is what i have in here i have this little magic box and in it i keep all the essentials extra bobbins and needles for the machine and seam rippers etc and then in here backup thread now some people and my good sewing scissors and my box of pins now some people think that uh you know or some people have these really nicely organized neat and tidy cabinets with all these little you know pegs on them to keep this that and the next thing i've always had this to me this this is like 40 <laughs> years old <laughs> And it's always served the purpose. And plus, when I need it, I just go like this. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I take it with me, whether I'm going to a school to help them with costumes or whatever. I have my tape measures in there, everything. I know everything's in there, so I just grab it and go. So, tape measure. You know, yeah. Some people we have their own cabinets. We need a tape measure. We, yeah. have, a, we have a ruler. But we need <laughs> a fabric tape measure. one. That would work. Good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can always improvise Down. on a tape We're, measure. So a tape measure. And I noticed. Mm -hmm. I do have a special scissor. I know um, I took, I was in a class and every, they were, we were making mittens and I, this is when I realized I knew nothing and <laughs> I my own special scissor and, and I just brought a scissor, you know, like from my house and they said, no, no, you only use this. You don't cut paper with that. No. <laughs> <laughs> and so we need to have a designated scissor, I guess. Is that important? Yes. Um, I've had this. Okay, I'll dig it out and show it to you because it's ancient. I have had this scissors here, never been sharpened. I've had it for 40 years. Oh. Let's see? old yeah, and ready yeah. it is see <laughs> <laughs> it, it works really well and I, I remember threatening my children that if i ever caught them with the scissors using it for anything at all yeah. um they would be severely dealt with because and, and they and my whole family knows that they don't touch that <laughs> you know it's only for fabric once you start using it on other stuff you might as well throw it away I mean, that's how okay. I feel. So. so we should get, <laughs> yeah, special, we need so a special scissor. Tape measure, scissor. Mm -hmm. And scissors are expensive. Good ones are pricey. Okay. Yeah. So pin, uh, you might want to chain them up. <laughs> yeah, we don't have any straight pins. We probably no. should have straight pins. Mm -hmm. Straight pins, uh, tape measure. Um, I think you have a few bobbins, but some empty bobbins would be nice. Okay. And you know, I mean, I don't know what your budget is for this, but if you can afford it, a nice array of different colored threads would be wonderful. Okay. All right. I yeah. think we have four colors right now. Black, white, gray. <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 Very basic. Yeah. basic. yeah. So yeah, we're just getting started here. And um do we need a seam ripper or something like that? Or um yeah, actually I think that one I I think, you know, in that little hidden spot in that one sewing machine yeah. there, I believe yeah. there was one in there. Okay. Um, right. It's not essential, but it does make things easy if you have to rip them out. Okay. All right. All right. So um, we're going to now show everyone our sewing machines and talk a little bit about it. And then uh, if you want to add anything, add. And then we're going to show the videos of you sewing on the machines. We'll talk a little okay. bit about it. And let me just say I'm the worst camera person ever. <laughs> I don't think so. Nope. <laughs> I doubt that. <laughs> uh, so um, we're just going to look around uh, the room here and talk about it. And, and then we'll get back to you. All right. All right. Okay, so Jess, I'll let you um, move our uh, our laptop around, and let's start over here. Okay, you you have her? Are you her? Um, hmm. All right. So um, 
here is our sewing machine and um, it's usually kept over on a cart. And now we are really organized because right here, just to show you, are all of Deb's videos. There are these little QR codes and with um, we'll give you an iPad or you can use your own phone and it'll jump to the videos. Now, if you, I, that's how I like to learn is just using videos. That's the best way. Uh, we also have some quick guides, um, just quick. Uh, we have the manual and just a quick uh, thread loading guide if you need it. If you really are gonna get good at this, you can watch this DVD. It'll tell you how to do buttons and zippers and all that really complicated stuff. So we have a DVD for you. This will be with the sewing machine on its cart. And I'll show you the cart in a little bit um, that has uh, everything on it that you, you're welcome to anything on the cart. There's even a couple of projects there. All right. so. Here is our brother sewing machine, and we'll be talking um, and looking at Deb's video um, down a little bit there. Um, this one is really basic, and Deb just jumped on it without even looking at the manual because if you know how to um, if you know how to thread a machine on a bobbin, I guess it's natural. It's like riding a bike. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So now we have another machine over here. And Jess and I were really afraid of this machine mm -hmm. because it's digital. And I'll be talking a lot about the digital sewing machine. Um, it's, um, it's different from that one. I would suggest if you're a newbie at this, use the, um, the brother. Uh, the basic brother. If, if, if you're really good at it and you want to do some embroidery or letters or some fancy stitches, this is the machine you want to use. And we'll talk a little bit about it. We couldn't get to work for like when Deb came, we couldn't figure it out because there's so many buttons on this machine mm -hmm. and just one button was pushed wrong and then we couldn't figure it out. But after many, many YouTube videos, I was able to figure it out. This one also has um, a video that a how to video that's really easy. Um, I found it on YouTube. I really liked it. And um, this one also has a really good um, guide. And if you really like this machine and you, you're going to do a lot of embroidery and different things on it, uh, appliques and things like that, then um, take this home and uh, try um, watching the videos on using this machine. We have a quick reference guide on all the stitches, the lettering, and uh, this, this part, this, this extra part. So that is there for you to use too. Okay, so those are our machines and um, they're kept right over in the corner there. I have a couple of, um, I'm just going to walk over and just can just stay there. We can okay. wheel it on over here. Yeah, so here it is. We have over here, um, our ironing board is out right now for another project. We have an iron and then here's the cart. Now on the cart, we have two easy projects to um, do. We have, this is mine and Jess's from last year that's still on here because they mm -hmm. haven't really done very well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And we keep thinking, you can see mine is like, um, Deb's going to talk about that in the video. It's got string that's, do, uh, the thread's doing all But it things. smells really good. Yeah, it smells good. And then there's another one. Oh, I think this one was yours. Oh, yep, yep. Still have so <laughs> Right. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have a hot pad uh, that you can make um, the directions here. So this part, and we have some material um, that you can use. Uh, on the cart if you want to come in and just practice thread and uh, different supplies. So that's there for you. And now we're just going to go back and pop back on the computer and take a look at a couple of videos that Dad did for us. You can get up close and personal um, with our um, with our sewing machine. Sewing machine. Yeah. <laughs> and so, so those QR codes that Janine was 
those actually go straight to scan them with your phone um, or, or if you have an iPad, it'll go straight to the um, straight to the video. And we have iPads here, so you could yeah you can go. So yeah. yeah, it'll it'll come right up to Deb's video. So yeah, we have iPads. We would hand you, you would scan the QR code, and then the video would come up. And in fact, um, a lot of our uh, projects here have QR codes with videos. I, I think videos are so much better than reading, trying to read with them. And um, so we're going to switch over to, um, we have a YouTube channel and uh, Jess or Deb's videos are on our YouTube channel. So we're going to switch over now and we're going to look at the very first one. And this is Deb uh, coming in, knowing nothing about our machines and be she now is going to uh, show you how to thread the needle. Do is put it basics. around this little thing on the top. Oh, here, let me just get full screen here. Okay. Thread the machine. First thing you want to do is put it around this little thing on the top here. Then you're going to go to the right. There's two long slits here. We're going to go to the right and bring it down around the bottom and up. Oops, it didn't catch. <laughs> okay, we wanna make sure it catches on the bottom and then bring it up. Okay, then you can use the wheel on the right side here at the top to kind of bring this piece up. You can't really see it from the side, but if you get right in there, you can, I'm gonna move it just a little and then you'll see it. You see it moving? Oh, yeah. Okay, so you wanna bring that up as high, high as you can. And then we're gonna bring this down. Hopefully it'll catch, which I, I think it did. I don't know. I, I'm not, this, I'm not yeah. exactly used to this machine, but I think I did it right. Okay, so now we're gonna bring it down here and then there's this part right there, that little thing right there. We're gonna put the oh, right yeah. in there like that. There's that little, little hook there. Yeah. Right. Okay, and then I think this is right. It seems like it is. I'm gonna cut the end of the thread just to get a good clean cut so I can get it through that needle. This does have an automatic needle threader. I'm not a huge fan of those. Um, I have more luck just doing it the way my grandma showed me. <laughs> as long as my <laughs> eyes hold out, it should work. Okay, so we bring it through then. And then I just pull that thread to the back so it's out of the way. Okay, then we're gonna drop in the bobbin. It's pretty easy. I'm just gonna snip a little of this off. It's a little long. Um, you're gonna um, drop your bobbin in so that if you pull it, if you pull the thread, the bobbin turns counterclockwise. So you'll be able to test it, whether you put it in the right way, just by that. It should go counterclockwise. Okay, so you put the bobbin in, you just drop it in. Then there's this little thing right here that will catch the thread. You just <laughs> Put this under there and just leave it come out the back like that a little bit. And then you're gonna take your first thread, the upper thread, and you're just gonna turn your wheel on the right slowly toward you. I'm just gonna go over to that to show okay, them slowly that she's... toward you. Okay. And then bring it back up and hold on. Don't let go of this thread the whole time. And you should have pulled the bobbin thread up then, which I did. So then you pull them both through, I send them both to the back. And then we can put our little cover back on. <laughs> All right. So, there we go, bingo. All right, why don't we run a piece of uh, material through to show them. Okay, hopefully I threaded it correctly, I'm not sure. <laughs> okay, so if we just wanna do straight stitching, um, this, these little number, little knobs up here control the, like if you're doing a zigzag stitch, for example, this will control the width of that zigzag. So if you want just a little tiny zigzag, you take it to the left. If you want bigger, you take it to the right. But for now, that won't apply. And this controls stitch length. Um, and same thing, if you want your stitches real close together, you turn it that way. If you want them looser, 
you turn it to the right. I'm just going to leave them where they are because I did a test one before and they seemed fine. Okay, so right here, and then the last one is tension, right? Oh, that's thread tension. tension yeah. yeah, usually you don't mess with that. Usually you don't. Usually it's, you know, pretty much set and you can just leave it. All right. Um, okay. All right, so, um, so before you start sewing anything, you need to lower the presser foot. That's what this little attachment is here. It, okay. It um, keeps your fabric in perfect alignment so that you're not, you know, willy-nilly around there. It holds it down. So the way you do that is you just drop this down right here. There's this little lever there. Okay. And you just, oh, all right. And when you want to bring it up again so that you can move your fabric out, you just lift it up. Okay. It's just the opposite. So we're going to put that in. Then I like to take my um, needle and just put it in by hand just for, just so it's in the fabric. That's how my mom taught me. <laughs> I'm not sure how important it is with modern machines, but anyway, then if you want to stitch forward. And you're um, doing, you have a pedal here that you're You just using. put a little pressure yeah, on it. Pedal, yeah. And you just start and there it goes. Let's just say, okay, you want to lock your stitches in. Um, before you would start, before you would continue, you would just take this thing and push it down. And you can do that even while you're running the machine. And it'll go backwards. And then if you bring it back up and down, up, you don't necessarily have to stop it. In other words, to change directions. Not like a car. Yeah. <laughs> a car you should probably stop before you change gears. But here, just go. <laughs> All right. Okay, so then... And now you can see we have a beautiful line. <laughs> it's just gorgeous. <laughs> line of stitches. And these are the places where I backed up a little just for demonstration. And then the back side looks real good. Now, if the back side was loopy, if it looked like big loops coming out, that's where you know your tension is goofy and you might want to adjust it. But I would not mess with it. I would leave it right where it is. Do we want to do a zigzag? Sure, let's do a zigzag. Okay, <laughs> turn that off and let me figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> all right so we've got the basics um and um well, wrong one jess <laughs> all right so now we're going to go to stitches should we do the stitch one sure yeah let's do we'll do all the videos and then we'll go back to the machine and to zigzag look at all the different stitches you can do right a straight stitch is number two that's where we're at now we're going to switch to number three which is ta-da <laughs> now we're on three which is this one <laughs> okay so um i am going to take it down to just a narrow zigzag which will be like a, about a one ish so we'll put the presser foot down again put the needle into the fabric i'm just going to go forward just to show you what this thing can do. Okay, so okay, so that's a very narrow zigzag, and we'll see that later when I pull the fabric out. Um, if you want to adjust it, make sure you pull the needle out. You don't want to adjust it with the needle in the fabric; it it'll bend the needle. It's not it's not a good practice. So we'll go a little bigger, and here we go. Ooh, now you can really see it moving back and forth. Once again, oh, the needle's out. Okay, good. We'll go even bigger. Oh, there we go. Okay, now, let's just say that you didn't want, I don't know if you can get this, but let's just say that you didn't want your stitches to be that far apart. What if you wanted them real close? Well, that's where this comes into play. So if we want to go narrower, closer together, whatever you want to call it. Now we can dial it down and let's see what happens. Wow. Like you could use a stitch like this if you are doing, um, my old brain can't remember the word. Applique. <laughs> That's the word. <laughs> that is escaping me at the moment. <laughs> I wish I could remember, but you know, I'm having a senior moment. 
Okay, so that's how you do that. And then, then oh. now you can see the difference. I'll pull it out. Sure, and it even shows how to cut that thread off so we don't. Oh, yeah, that's do right. Something. Okay, so you pull the thread out like this, and then you just take both of the, them together, and right along here somewhere, I don't know where, I, I just can feel it. You just slide it down when you feel, then you just put some pressure on it. <laughs> and now you can see the difference. Yeah, it can work. <laughs> Okay, and now Bobbin. Old maid revisited. What? <laughs> you couldn't think of the word. Okay, so to read the bobbin, what you want to do is uh, put your bobbin on top of this little spindle. Oh, first remove this thing. So I'm not sure why it's there, but it is, so we'll take it off. And you're going to Put the bobbin on there so that the thread is coming off the back of it like towards you so put it on there securely then slide it over this is a little stopper there and that will engage the bobbin winding mechanism in your machine so you push on the little foot pedal and it winds it winds it winds it and if you forget what you're doing and you're lost in thought you just keep going and eventually it will stop on its own when it reaches capacity that's what this little guy is for and when you're done, you just pop it back and take it off. So what's nice is it looks like it has the numbers on here. So you have you can follow it. So this was I did here with your <laughs> yes. All right. and then it says two, three, four. So we've got one, two, three, four. All right. Okay. And when you started it, you kind you you wrapped it to get I it did. started i did wrap it so wrap just it. a few times so that's to... one yeah and then it goes around this and it shows you right it just hooks on there that the yeah. only thing that does is keep a little tension on it so it yeah. winds evenly that's and all and then and then it's there so and then you're all ready to go and she did right. that yep now all we're right. going to take it off yeah move on to step two all right all right now we can stop our videos Okay, I am not well, very, <laughs> I'm not very good at the camera. Uh, no, that I'm, I'm just you know applique, applique. <laughs> oh well. <laughs> uh, so what I've learned about both of these machines, they have it numbered really nicely. Like the bobbin, all the numbers are on the top for threading the needle. It goes along the side, and, and if you follow it, it really. Um, it really works well. I guess here's the, here's the question. So what is the, like, what is the bobbin, the purpose of the bobbin? Because isn't, isn't the thread coming off of that big spool there? Well, actually, when you sew, there are two threads. There's the thread that, um, and you can, if you really need to visualize it, you could use a different color bobbin just to see what the difference is. But, um, the the top thread um will be actually your stitching thread the the bobbin thread will run along the bottom and it will hold the top thread in place so you really need you're really sewing with two threads when you're sewing on a machine and um one locks the bobbin locks the thread in place basically got it yeah and and i was able to thread the bobbin really easily again there's a, a picture and it mm -hmm. And it tells you exactly to go to counterclockwise, and um, yeah, so it. I, I did not tangle up anything, which I was really proud of myself. That's uh, really good because that's so easily uh, done. <laughs> so then, like what you were doing up here when you were threading the bobbin, is you were just pulling the thread off of here and putting it onto that, to then let later load it down here. Um, yes, pulling the thread off the large spool, winding it onto the little bobbin holder thing. Got yeah. it. Okay. Okay. So mm -hmm. on both machines, there's a little built-in um, uh, drawer with all, all things you might need. And um, needles, if there's a different um, presser foot. Yes. I press, you know what we had on that 
Project Runway the wrong presser foot on. Oh, uh, this, but that I was wondering about that. Yeah. Yeah. Now I know everything you need to know about presser foots. Oh, but that's good. It, it didn't help. It's still we could, I could, but I'll show everyone in a minute that yeah. the magic button is. So it has um, some uh, bobbins and uh, diff different things that you might need, needles. So that's just kept right here and uh, in here. So I'm just gonna, mm -hmm. and make sure when you come, um, we'll either Jess or I, um, uh, if it we're here, we're, we're, we'll, we'll be happy to help you uh, get started. Um, but um, you have to plug in the, the sewing machine to get it to go. So um, make sure you get that all um, plugged in and then uh, ready to go. So I've got this one ready. Um, no, I don't. I'm gonna, um, this is the project runway and it's a digital machine. So I'm gonna just plug it in. And with this one, it comes with this, hey, I figured this out, Deb. Oh, good. Proud of me. So mm -hmm. um, here it also has the same thing as that one. Any kind of supplies that you might, might need. Because this one does embroidery and lots of fancy uh, stitches, it has multiple presser foots. Yep. Presser feet or presser foots? <laughs> well, I would call it presser feet, but you know. <laughs> <Let's see. laughs> So multiple and depending on what you're using, you would change those out. And it was really easy to change, I noticed. It was oh, very, yeah. I, I, I had no tr trouble. And yeah, I, the old machines, you had to screw them on and off. Now you just pop them on and off. It's really yeah. nice. So this, this <laughs> is attached right here and you just pull it off and it has anything that you might need. I better put these back. And then we, I noticed that if, um, and you'll have to tell us, Deb, why this is for this machine. It had this attachment and that just goes like that. It has a whole booklet on how to put it together, but I figured it out without reading anything. Yeah, I'm not really sure what um, yes. the purpose of that extension is. Yeah. It has a um, room, it's easier to work probably if you've got more fabric. You've got, you know. Yeah. So this one know. turns on over here. And um, we, uh, as you can see, it's digital. J stitches are uh, here, and then there's N, and then there's another one. Uh, um, but they have different. Um, the same thing as this one, but it's all digital. You know, you have to minus or plus. Right. Make sure you watch the video or read the booklet because um, it's 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 pretty complicated. Now, you with this machine, you can either use the or the the foot thing. What do you call this? The gas pedal. Mm -hmm. Gas pedal. Mm -hmm. What is this called? <laughs> Um, I always just call it the pedal. The pedal. Okay. So, yeah. you, I mean, you, um, with this one, it has a pedal. But if you don't want to use the pedal, you unplug it. And then you can use, um, there's this button right here. So oh, you, interesting. Yeah. Reverse button. So, it's got these two. And, interesting. Uh, it's, it's, it's threaded the same way. The bobbin, everything is the same as that machine. Mm -hmm. Just going to put this in here. And um, so, if you're into doing fancy, I, as I said, use that other one. If 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 this is the first time, um, use that one because this one gets really complicated. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it took us a while to uh, figure it out, um, the digital, but right now it's just on a straight stitch and the width and the size and all that that we did with manually on this one is all done digitally here. So, um, and then the one thing that we um, have trouble with is um, 
and you can't even see it. There's this little button in the back and I don't know, can you see that little button? It's got this little button right here. Do you all see that? Deb, do you see that button? No, oh, oh, where, show me now, I can see it now. I mean, I see the back of the machine now. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's well, how odd. <laughs> so what problem we're hmm. having is yeah. that the material would not be. And I guess again, if you're, you know, yeah. If you're doing maybe um, some something really creative, maybe. <laughs> uh, like maybe embroidery, I don't know. Right, I'm, I'm trying to think of what, hmm. I mean, I remember my grandma used to hand embroider pillowcases, but people, do they still do that? I don't know. Um, but you know, there are some situations where you might yeah. want to use that feature. Yeah. So um, I, I did everything. I took the thing apart, um, looking for why it wasn't in front. And I said, well, I'm going to have to just, it was Sunday when I was here trying to figure this thing out. And I said, well, I'll just have to call the machine or the place on um, Monday. The, and then um, finally found a video that gave me the answer. So um, that's good. Yeah. So I, I yeah. So these are our sewing and we're excited about them. Now, Jess and I have an assignment. What's that? What is that? So, <laughs> so we're going to make something on these sewing machines. And Ooh. We have a program called the Creative Bug, and you're going to have to look at this, Deb. It's okay. Um, it's a, and I'm going to show everyone. I, I'm not logging in because we, uh, but De uh, Jess will log in. So we're going to go back onto the computer. And Did you say it's called the Creative Bug? Yeah. B U G. B -U -G. B -U -G. Bug. Okay. Yeah. So, well, and also, if, if folks want to use these sewing machines, they can just call us and sign up. Um, and they are in our maker space, so you could sign up and use them. Yeah. Um, and Janine and I are here to help you as much as we can. But, uh, but yeah. So. So creative bug is is our newest purchase for the Door County Libraries. Oh, you need to get there again. There it is, and it's in downloadable library. And artists are real familiar with this, and art teachers. Um, Creative Bug is, and we did a, a a Zoom on this last month, I think it is. But it has a lot of sewing projects. So Jess and I are going to find a project mm. on Creative Bug. We're going to do it. And then we're going to show you what we did next week at two o'clock. All right, all right. That's a lot of so. pressure, but well, good. <laughs> <laughs> to get into Creative Bug, all you need is your library card and your PIN. Your PIN is a six digit number and it's your birthday. So mine is 041656. And then so you put your library card number and your PIN and you log in. And there's tons of projects to do. So we're going to each choose a, a sewing project, use our machines, and then show you what we did next week. All righty. Right. Well, that will be something to look forward to. <laughs> <laughs> so anyone who wants to use, I, don't, I think I'm going to make a new mask because I washed this one and it's now too loose on me. But it's too, it's cute. Oh. I you could like sew I one of those sew like, <laughs> cincher things yeah, on there. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, the troubles with masks. Oh my. You could, you could also um, twist the piece that you know that goes around your ear, cross it yeah. in front of your ear. Yeah. You could try that. Uh, well, I'm going to correct it. Maybe use. <laughs> There you go. To fix it. So um, anyone who wants to use our sewing machines, please come in, give us a call, and we'll schedule you in our um, makerspace. 
if you call us, then we can make sure that we're here. Right. And um, you 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 can be by yourself in here or with your COVID pod, um, and mm -hmm. room to yourself. Yeah. So um, and our libraries open Monday through Saturday. Um, the hours are on the Door County uh, Library website, uh, but feel free to, and, and even addition, because the classes open more hours than the mm -hmm, library. Mm -hmm. So our building is open uh, eight o'clock every morning. It's just closing time um, differs. So just give us a call um, at 920-868-2664. I sound like one of those commercials. <laughs> 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 and it's free it's free come on in and we'll get you all set up we have lots of different projects it bring your i would look at creative bug and come with a project on creative bug but come get familiar with our machines so you, maybe you want to purchase one or you just want to use the one here at the library you're welcome to use it and so we're going to conclude yeah i'm going to yeah. just check and see if we have any questions on facebook here um, it doesn't look like it. Um, okay. I think we've done a pretty thorough job, I guess. Yeah. And Deb, I have to thank you for spending so much time with us here at the press and at home. And we appreciate your time and your skills. And uh, now you can go back to retirement. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Thanks. Um, thanks for having me. And yeah. um, I just wanted to say that I was very impressed with that facility. It's just lovely on every level. So um, I hope people take advantage of it and use it. Great. Thank you so much for your time. Okay. Thank you, see everyone. Um, we will see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. <laughs>